Hi. So today, uh, as I mentioned last time, I thought it would be good just to do a little session on voices, voices that we hear and voices that we listen to. Um, because I'm aware that certainly in, in mental illness, um, hearing voices is something, particularly in serious mental illness, that, that comes up um, quite frequently. And I think it can seem like a very scary thing and it can be a very distressing thing for people um, who do um, hear voices in that context. So I thought I'd just uh, give a, a sort of little overview of voices as I, as I see them. This is just a personal view and it's, it's from um, also what patients have said to me, um, some examples that they've given me over the years. Um, and I just thought it might be, be helpful or might, might throw some things out there for conversation about, about voices that we hear and, and that we listen to. So I think I think you could maybe say that voices can be internal or external. They're from inside or without or outsiders. Um, voices outside of us, I think we would think of as being fairly straightforward. So you'd think about people, um, you know, speaking in the street, people speaking to you, having conversations with you, the voices of other people around us that we we listen to. I think if you uh, lived in a different country or a different culture, um, you'd be much more aware of voices of unseen beings. So, um, so spiritual, the spiritual realm and being aware more of the spiritual realm and being able to hear invisible beings. Now, for those of us who live in the West, that's a very alien concept for a lot of people because it's not something that we talk about freely in our culture or is part of our worldview. Um, that doesn't mean it's not true or not real. Um, certainly when I visited Africa, it was normal for people there to um, engage with the spiritual realm and talk about the spiritual realm. And if we think about faiths like Christianity, um, what the Bible says, then in the Bible, people heard the audible voice of God speaking to them, the invisible God speaking to them. So I think it's really important that we are aware that there, there can be more to um, to creation and more to what's around us than we, we might have a mindset for at the moment. And being aware that, that voices from without can be um, from the spiritual realm, from God or from other spiritual beings. So just throwing that out there as something to think about and consider if you haven't done that before. Voices from within. So, um, I mean, I know I, I can have my own internal dialogue, you know, I'm driving the car and I'm going through in my head the list of shopping that I, I need to get and what I might need to get. And, and I can almost hear myself within my head, um, my own voice um, talking about things. I can also, um, if I let myself hear voices of other people as well. So people that I know well, I, I know what their voices sound like. And so I can replay in my head conversations with people and I can get, I can recognise the voice of um, people that I've been in conversation with. Maybe even people that I've seen on the television and um, things like that as well. Repetitive voices that I recognise sort of within my, my own mind. Um, now it's interesting because I've had um, I've had patients who've told me that they have lots of voices in their minds and almost like a family in their heads, and um, one patient in particular telling me that um, she was she was actually um, abused as a child and um, something that I'll talk about in the next session something called dissociative identity disorder um, is a way of a person surviving traumatic things things like abuse. And one way of doing that is is that they become separated into parts as a pers as personalities, different parts of their personality, if you like. Um, and for this girl, um, she said it was a bit like having lots of noisy children in her head, different parts of her, if you like, with different kinds of voices that she was in charge of. And that was very tiring for her. Now, that wasn't psychosis. She'd been seen by a psychiatrist and... Um, confirmed that this wasn't psychosis this was um, different parts of her that she could hear in her mind having conversations so that's a different aspect to voices um, 
I have had patient a patient as well tell me that they were, get, were hearing voices and they said it was within them. It was like as if it was in their mind. But they, they said it was like having um, God on one shoulder and a demon on the other shoulder. And it was difficult trying to work out who to listen to because um, they were telling them different things. It's almost like they were having some somebody who they could hear saying good things and positive things and someone who they could hear saying bad things and negative things again they didn't have psychosis um but it was as if there were different parts of their conscience if you like that were were telling them different things and they, they were trying to choose which one to agree with and then we can have the you know the serious mental illnesses where um as i said last week people hear um, voices and it can be voices as if there was a person in the room um, talking to them but they, they hear it internally um, and it's as if that voice is there in their head all the time talking to them or voices. It's really interesting um, with things like schizophrenia that the voices are um, nearly always negative. I thought I'd read you a little bit actually from the website from an organisation schizophreniauk.org uh, which is worth having a look at and they've got some really interesting articles and information on their website and um, and this person was saying um the voice why are the voice is so powerful and they said it's because they know you intimately they come from inside of you and understand your whole psych psyche they know this your strengths and weaknesses and all your secret fears and hates and you can't get away from them and you haven't got control over them and it's interesting, isn't it? It's like like these voices are often negative, often controlling, fear bringing, um, intrusive. What we would say, intrusive, um, and and that's a very difficult thing to have going on in inside of you in your mind. Um, I mean, I wonder. There's so much debate about why things like schizophrenia happen and and what these. Um, what these voices are there's there's some research that suggests that it's the person themselves that's saying these things but it's 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 um the way they interpret it it feels like it's somebody else um and and we don't know i think often there have been difficult things in the past or negative things in the past or um trauma as i talked about last week and and i wonder how many of the voices that we hear especially when they're really negative and really condemning and bringing fear, whether they are linked with experiences that have happened sometimes and um, traumatic things that have happened in our lives, maybe even that we've forgotten or blocked out, um, that just come and, 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 and become powerful and, and controlling for that person. So there are lots of different kinds of aspects to, to voices. I mean, if I'm thinking really practically, I think it's quite helpful. Um, I think from a mental health point of view, obviously, if someone's very, very distressed and hearing these voices um, as if it was somebody separate that's talking to them, but they're not really there, it's really important to get help. Um, because we know that um, for those people, it's very traumatic, very distressing and and can, can really lead to, to low mood and thoughts of self-harm and so getting some help um, you know, if it's a crisis dialing 999 or going to a local A&E department or um, making sure that you get some help is really important if it's not so much of a crisis going and talking to somebody so that could be a GP some a family doctor um, a trusted friend that you know getting some help from somewhere um, is really really important in that situation but when someone's stable and things are under control as much as they can be, they're actually starting to think about, you know, what, what are the patterns again? What's the story again? When did those voices become apparent? What are the patterns that they talk about? What could that be linked with? What might it go back to? Are there some things there in the past that, that actually maybe I've not resolved or even talked about with anybody? Maybe there are things I feel shame for or... Um, you know, things that I've just not resolved or talked through or processed with anybody, traumatic things maybe. And actually getting some help for that may help with the voices that we're hearing. And then I think being willing to start to think about the whole spiritual realm, you know, what what is it that we're listening to? What is it that we're 
opening ourselves up to um maybe in the media maybe in what films we watch maybe you know horror stuff what do we expose ourselves to that actually then could be replaying and 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 having a sort of power over us or control over us a bit like the person said that could be um could be affecting us in that way and and again actually starting to talk to somebody about that and think about that and research that a little bit think about our our world view and how our world view and our mindsets become so ingrained that we never even consider that there may be something else there may be something outside of that that we haven't considered there may be a spiritual realm that we haven't considered um and and thinking about our own voice as well just the things that we say to ourselves the things that we we speak about ourselves and i think often we're more negative about ourselves than other people are about us and you know some of the things we say to ourselves or about ourselves are so much more critical and um, negative and, and unpleasant than we would ever say to one of our friends and actually stopping that actually taking care and stopping that and thinking about how we talk about ourselves and learning to love and value ourselves and speak positively and kindly to ourselves just as we would to a really good friend um, and I think that's a really important thing to do. And we can actually change some of the things that we hear in our heads, some of the patterns of things that we hear in our heads by just starting to notice and starting to choose um, to change what, what, we, what we say to ourselves and, and some of the thoughts and actually recognising where, where they're coming from and, and actually choosing which to agree with and which not to agree with. Remembering that we do actually... Um, have some control over we do have control over what we think what we what we choose to think um so just some things in there to think about and and i hope it's just i, do, I can't give a prescriptive um definite answer for everything to do with voices but i just wanted to throw a few seeds out there a few ideas of things that maybe we can consider and think about um, that we haven't before